the first thing I think about this game is its 3D board here. Now it's very unique. There's not a lot of games that have 3D level design to them. And this one is a puzzle game, which I've never seen a puzzle game with a unique design element like this one. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Holly Festival of Colors with artwork by Vincent Dutre and it's designed by Julio Nazario, produced by Floodgate Games. It plays two to four players. It's a three dimensional game with three separate little stories where you're going to be dropping your little colors. They're going to fall down and you're going to be scoring points based on where your colors end up at the end of the game and how they end up in certain ways. There's unique and different objectives. They're going to come out with different rules every time you play the game, but the base rules stay the same. And if you can score the most points by spreading the most color above the most platforms, you're going to win the game. We'll show you down below what this color festival game looks like, show you how to play, and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. So here we have the game Holly Festival of Colors, and it's set up for four players. Before we get into that, we'll talk about this 3D platform here. You're going to be getting four pieces of these cardboard areas for each of the platform levels, and the way you put them in is one to six, one to six. Make sure they match the rows here and, all, and the columns here with A and F going down. You'll do that for all of them. They are all assorted in colors, and you can choose to put them together however however you want. Then you have the levels one, two, and three. Place them in the slots represented on these four big columns here. Stick them in, it's fairly simple. After you do that, then the setup of the game. Going to be placing these suites in the middle layer here in the corners. One of them in each of the corners here, or the side corners, I should say. And then at the bottom one here, you're going to have two in each of the side corners. After that, the board is set up when you place your characters in the far corners on the bottom of the board. Each player is going to get a set of suites. They're going to get a deck of cards and a player reference sheet, which will have player actions and the gameplay overview. Over here are going to be scoring and rule changes to the game. Three of them, for instance, whether it be color tokens on the top row, instead of being worth three points, will be worth four at the end of the game. Or whenever uh, a color of your type is directly above another color of your type, you'll score a point, which means you can score up to two points for having a color here, a color here, and a color here. When you direct hit another player, they have to give you one of their sweet tokens if they have one. You'll be collecting these guys, which will be worth points at the end of the game, provided you have more than other players. And when you hit a player with your colors, which I'll explain in a second here, you can actually steal one of these tokens from them. And there is a ton of different scoring and rule changes throughout the game that you can mix it up. So every game will have its own unique scoring and rules uh, that you can fluctuate with. To begin the game, choose a player that is the most colorful. In this case, we'll just go ahead and choose yellow. Every player is going to draw one card they're secretly going to hold in their hand, and that will be the card they're going to use when they play a card on their turn. You must always play a card in your turn if you can. If you can't, you're out of the game. On your turn, you get to do three things. One thing is you can move anywhere on the row that you're at. So I can move from here over to here if I want. That's not an issue. You can only move on spaces that are not preoccupied. And if you move on a space that already has a color of another player's, so for instance, if I moved on this space here, I'm going to take that colored token. I can also do that for my own tokens as well. You want to avoid doing that, however, because it's going to score players points when, at the end of the game, scoring happens. So they're going to get two points for each token they have uh, given to another player, whether it be by force or because the other player chose to do so. Another action you can take is if you are fully surrounded by other colors, so I'll go ahead and show you this. Basically, if my character was fully surrounded by colors, I could advance from uh, this space here up to the next level. And then I can start placing and moving as well. So for instance, if I wanted to, because you can do this in any order, if I started here, I could then move up and then I can move anywhere on this board here. And then the last thing I can do is play a card. Playing a card is fairly simple. There are two types of cards in the game. So if I, was, if I went ahead and moved here for my, for my movement, I would then use this card here. I'll show you guys up here. And I would go ahead and place colors down. Now there's this one, and I'll go ahead and show you the other example. This one here. And if you play a card like this that doesn't have a 
flower here, you're going to place, uh, you're going to have your character in a position that is equivalent to one of these three areas here. So if I wanted to, I could have the character over here, in which case I'd place colors on this side. If I had a, my character here, I would then go ahead and place colors here. So I'll go ahead and show you this example here, this player being right here, and I'll place two colors over there. So I'm going to go ahead and check my rows here, place one there and place one there on top of that suite. If I didn't use that card, in fact, have this card instead, basically I would always be in the position of the flower. So I would actually go ahead and place my tokens. And obviously I can have this, I can orientate this in any direction. I'll go ahead and orientate it in that direction. And I'll place my tokens like this. And because my character is always going to be on that specific space there. After I play my card, my uh, and I do any of my other actions I possibly can do, remember moving up platforms is going to be probably in the middle of the game after you've kind of uh, played enough tokens down, then you're going to end your turn. When you end your turn, you'll draw up to three cards, and you'll always draw up to three cards after your first action, and then you'll go ahead and set these cards aside, secretly face down, and the next player will begin. And they'll get to do these same actions as well. After everybody's taken a turn, then you start again, and you keep going throughout the game. Uh, that's pretty much the basic idea of the game. The game is going to end when you either A, run out of cards or run out of sweets. That typically is how it's going to end. And you can also stop playing when you no longer have sweets to place or cards to place as well. Like I said before, moving up is going to allow you to place these sweet tokens up on the middle layer. And for instance, if it was yellow's turn after everybody else had went, I could go ahead and play. Well, I'll go ahead and choose one from my hand. I can go ahead and play this card here orientating myself in the position of the flower and then I'll place my tokens down and when you're placing on the top levels you're always gonna have to check to see if at the bottom level there are tokens there if there are your tokens will stay if they are not your tokens will actually drop so in this case here this token will drop and this token drops but this token one two three will stay if I'm looking at it correctly, I am. And that's going to score him two points in the game. So you always want to try and place your tokens above other tokens. And also because of the unique scoring rule here, this will score him another point because it's of the same color. And the same rules apply when trying to climb the corporate ladder here or the festival of colors, colors level, level. When you have all your tokens, when tokens are all around you, you'll go ahead and climb up to the next platform and keep playing. And some other interesting things too, if for instance, I were to place my, I don't know, I'm using the wrong colors here, but if I were to place my tokens like this, you would actually see these guys drop. They're going to fall and you're going to check again and they might fall again. They might go all the way to the bottom level even though you're at the very top. So you have to kind of decide when you want to go up or, or whether you want to go up or not. Another interesting thing too, is we'll just show you the top la la layer here as though no other layers are present, just as an example of how attacking works. Uh, if the blue player is right there and the yellow player is here and the blue player wanted to play this card here, ignoring all other rules, just focusing on this, by the way, I'm going to associate my character with this and I'm going to place colors down in the spots, the other spots applicable. Now, because a player is currently in the spot I want to place this in, that player is going to take a hit and they're going to get my token. And also because of the unique scoring role, you're going to also, uh, they're going to also have to give you a suite if they have one. Another thing to note too is when you hit a player, you're also going to score a point every time you do, provided there's no other unique rules in the game. So it's another way of scoring points. And you'll total up three points if you hit the player and also at the end of the game, your token is going to be with them. Now let's say that the game ends. You're basically going to calculate your points. And the way it works is pretty simple. You're going to check the layers. You're going to add one point per color here of yours, two points here and three points here, provided there's no other unique rules here. You're also going to check your sweets. For each player that you have more sweets than, you're going to score five points. So if you have 10 and everybody else has six, five, and three, you get 15 points. And then you're also going to tally up any bonus scores here and that might get you additional points throughout the game. And of course, you'll score your, any of your points that you had previously from hitting other players. Another thing to note too, if you go over 50, you can flip your token over and keep playing. The last thing to note as well is you'll get two points for each of your colored tokens that are with another player. So for instance, if blue had given each player one of these for some reason, then he's gonna score two, four, and six points, and you'll tally those up as well. And after that, that is pretty much the end of the game. We'll discuss some of the unique rules, some of the unique scoring, and also my review right now above.
So what do I think of the game Holly Festival of Colors? Well, the first thing I think about this game is its 3D board here. Now it's very unique. There's not a lot of games that have 3D level design to them. And this one is a puzzle game, which I've never seen a puzzle game with a unique design element like this one, which presents some awesome advantages and disadvantages. And we'll talk about the disadvantages first to get them out of the way. Seeing the other players board their cards everything like that It's much harder to determine how many sweets players have and of course if the scoring tracker is away from you It'll be difficult to see as well I was playing on a live stream and obviously I was in the corner So it was a little bit more challenging my first play of the game But as we played down at the table it was actually a little easier to see what everybody else was doing Sometimes I'd stand up and just take a peek. So there is a slight thing with that However, the advantages make up for it the fact that you are moving from level to level, the colors are dropping, they're hitting other players, you're attempting to be a little bit aggressive in the game by kind of whacking players with your colors. It reminds me of like the, the, the little thing called Splat, Splat on uh, Nickelodeon back in the day, where you're like tossing colored paint at players. Kind of feels a little bit like that. You're trying to obviously gain area control on the board. You want to place as many colors as you can in the top levels, as well as hitting other players for that coveted 3D point bonus. There are certain rules in the game that changed the scoring element to make it so that you can actually score four points with a color and for every time you do that that's going to score you the most amount of points you're attempting to as best you can minimize the amount of uh, lower points you get by placing the bottom of the board and maximize the higher levels because you always want to get three points or more if you can with the colors that you spew out now of course that's not always going to be the case and so then it comes to player positioning being able to move wherever you want is nice, but it presents a challenge because placing your character on certain other players' colors will, in fact, score them points in addition to the points they would normally score by placement via the rules of the game. The game is extremely colorful, so it makes sense that it's all about colors. The fact that you can kind of position the board how you want as far as making the little placements is nice too because it gives you a little more sense of the different arrangements you can make. And the fact that there's always going to be additional rules. We'll talk about a couple of them. Direct hits award two points instead of one, totaling four points at the end of the game. Or something like Sweet Tooth, you get two points for each sweet token you gain, in addition to the five points you get for having more than other players. So basically the idea of what you're trying to do will change based on the unique rules set in the game. You can play with two or three different rules. I personally like playing with three. It presents more of a challenge and it definitely presents more variation to what you want to do in the game. The fact that you're always having to gauge the elements of the board based on the level that you're at is very nice. You can't ever go down. You're always trying to work your way up, which also makes sense. And that you always need colors around you in order to move up. Uh, you can basically have asymmetrical play as far as you can play the movement and the card and then move up or move up, move, and then play a card is also really nice. That element is fun and having that additional rule in the game presents some unique challenges with the cards you're playing. The first turn of the game, you're only going to get one card to choose to play with, and you still have a lot of variation with that because of the choice to move however you want in the game. So even with just one card, you're usually going to be able to place something somewhere and make it so that you'll score points in the game. The tallying of the points is not complicated at all, and moving across the board is very easy. I love the quality of the game. It's high-valued quality. The insert for the game is very nice as well. It's got a little game trays insert, which I think they did a very good job of, and when you position everything in there, it fits like a glove, which is also nice. The players scoring little cards here are good. They work and explain everything you need to know. However, I do prefer the end-of-game scoring uh, visual here rather than what's on the card. The card gives it to you in writing. This kind of gives you a more illustrious version of that and you go down the uh, point scoring. You're going to score the points for the level. You're going to score the points for each color token other players have. Five points for every suite uh, that you have more than other player. Five points for having more suites than another player. So you can score up to 15 with four players. And then any bonuses granted by cards. And that's very easy to follow. It is easy enough to follow on the cards here, but I just like that design better. Overall, an excellent game. This is a heck of a lot of fun. I am very excited to continue playing again. This is going to stay in my collection for quite some time. My wife enjoyed it as well. She won. I ended up losing, but I still had a great time playing. In fact, I lost 
every game I played. But I did get better as I kept playing. Of course, everybody else did as well. But still, I, I just really enjoyed this game. This is going to get my seal of approval, especially for puzzle games. It'll probably be in my top 10 list for puzzle games. And if you're interested in taking a look at the game, you should definitely check, a, check down below. Link in the description where you can pick up the game Holly Festival of Colors by Floodgate Games. They make some wonderful games, especially puzzle games. They make Sagrada, which by Daryl, it's an excellent game as well to take a look at. But I really, really enjoyed this one here. They spent a time and effort to make all the quality of the components very high. And it's something that I now understand very well. Even though the rules seem a little more complex, it's not actually that complex of a game. Once you get through at least maybe like three or four rounds of the game, you'll figure out how it functions. And you're gonna do much better each time you progress through it. Take a look down below. Overall, such an excellent fun game. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Go ahead and hit that bell notification button as well. It greatly helps us in the algorithms and lets you see more videos just like this one. You can also go and check out our website. We have our top lists coming out for the games of the year, games we reviewed. We have our Christmas guide up that you can take a look at as well as other reviews from our writers like Josh and Brian. You can also go ahead and check out our live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook where we play games just like this one. And in fact, we did play this game on Wednesday and you can see exactly how the game is played and determine for yourself if it's something you want to pick up if you're still not convinced with this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to flinging colors at you next time.